Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I have this awesome pop-up easel gift box. Let me turn it on the side so you can see what happens here. When you open it up, that easel pops up magically and I absolutely love this. I want to give credit for the inspiration to Sabina Fagen May from Bina Stempelglück. She's a German demonstrator. I absolutely loved her project. So I had to pixify it and come up with my own version. This is using the Beauty of the Earth product suite. You can find that on pages 10 and 11 of the annual catalog. Beautiful, beautiful suite for all the seasons. I absolutely love the sentiments and the trees in the stamp set. The dies are awesome that come with it and this beautiful designer series paper. I've kept the decorations on the box fairly simple because the wow really is the mechanism here. I just love that little pop-up easel. Now the size of the box that I've created, the interior box is three by three by one inch deep. And as an example, I'm showing you it perfectly fits three bottles of our classic Stampin' Ink refills. You could also put containers of embellishments, all kinds of treats would fit in there. Post-it notes are a pretty tight fit, but you might be able to get those in there. And I just absolutely love the way that this works. It's addictive to do this back and forth. I've got this ribbon pull mechanism. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. That gives you some great leverage to open this and I absolutely love it. So let me show you how to make this. First, we're gonna start with a piece of Mary Merlot cardstock that measures seven inches by seven inches. And we're gonna score this on all four sides at one inch and two inches. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. Bringing in the template here, we are gonna start, this is a square piece, so it doesn't matter where you start, but I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the second horizontal score line. So I'm gonna do that on all the vertical score lines on one side. All right, now we're gonna remove these two outside sections, and I'm also gonna come in and just slightly angle cut as I remove that. Just have like a tiny angle right there that I've cut that. Do the same thing on the opposite side here. And then with these two strips here, we're gonna remove one of the squares and leave behind a tab. So do that. And then we wanna come in and notch those tabs. So I'm just gonna fold the big piece out of the way and just angle cut those tabs. And then I'm gonna do the same thing just in this little outside section here. Basically all the pieces and parts of the cardstock that we're gonna fold into the box like so. So that side is finished. I'm gonna rotate it 180 and we're gonna repeat the exact same thing on the opposite side. All right, so that now looks like our template. The next thing we're gonna do is adhere some designer series paper, and I've got two pieces of the Beauty of the Earth designer series paper. These measure seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and I've cut those in landscape with a directional pattern. I'm gonna adhere these to this panel up and down, and then to this panel, it's gonna look like it's upside down. And we wanna make sure we're adhering it to the section that does not have the tabs attached. So you see these tabs are attached to the side sections here. We wanna make sure we put the designer series paper in this section that has no tabs. So I'm just gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue. Like so. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna grab some tear and tape and we're gonna run tear and tape along the outside edges right up to the edge of each of the four sides. Like so, and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna determine which side I want to be the front of the box. I think I like this pattern here. So I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna run first a piece of tear and tape right down the middle of that section. This is what our ribbon pole is gonna to attach to. And then we wanna make sure that that ribbon stays put. So I'm gonna put one more piece of tear and tape right up along that top score line. I'll show you close to the camera in just a minute. 
So we've added those two additional pieces. We've got one going right down the center of this section here and one right along the score line, like so. All right, so I'm gonna first peel off the backing from this one that's in the middle because we're gonna work on our ribbon. I have a six and a half inch piece of our faux suede trim. It is just perfect for this project. And I'm gonna start by laying that right on that exposed tear and tape, like so. And then you wanna kind of get that behind the tab. And this is gonna just wrap around the front, like so. And then let's move that tab out of the way. We're gonna bring this around and I'm gonna line up those cut edges together on that tear and tape. And what you'll find, this doesn't have to be perfect on the inside, but you just wanna get that ribbon attached to that tear and tape. We've met them in the middle there. And what you'll find is you've got a little bit of give here for the ribbon pull. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing off the rest of the tear and tape. It is easier to do this part now. Your hands are gonna to stick to it a little bit as we put the box together, but trust me, it's easier to do it before we put the box together. All right, we're gonna start with one tab at a time. I'm gonna use liquid glue for this. And this is the one of the tabs that's gonna glue right over that suede. So we're gonna line up that score line with this cut edge, and we're also gonna hold it in place a little bit longer than we normally would because we wanna make sure that it's adhering to that ribbon. So just take your time, hold it a few seconds longer than you normally would. Then we'll repeat the same thing on the remaining tabs. All right, now that we've got all those tabs glued, now we can fold these sides into the box. I like to do the two sides opposite or catty corner to the ribbon because those are just real easy to fold in. There's no tabs that those have to go over. The front and the back are gonna go over those tabs so it may be just a little bit more difficult to fold in, but it's not too bad. Then we'll do this last one. Now, what we wanna do is make sure that we reinforce all of these and it gives it nice crisp edges. So I'm gonna take some extra time here, especially on this panel that has the ribbon. Just get that pressed into place. And then work my way around the rest of the box. All right, so our box base is done. I love the sturdiness of that double reinforced edge. Let's work next on the sliding part of the box. I've got a piece of Mary Merlot that measures three inches by eight and a half inches. You're gonna want your paper trimmer for this or a scoring tool that has 16th of an inch measurements. Bringing in our paper trimmer, I'm gonna score this first at one and 11 sixteenths, which is one sixteenth before one and three quarters. So one and 11 sixteenths, and then two and three quarters. And then we're gonna do the same thing from the opposite end, one and 11 sixteenths, again, just before one and three quarters. And then two and three quarters. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on the score lines. Then I've got three pieces of designer series paper. The first one measures two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And I've got two pieces that measure 15 sixteenths by two and seven eighths. And I've got those cut in landscape. And we're gonna put those in this direction on the center panels. And then this one, we're gonna, going to go top to bottom with the pattern and that's gonna glue down in that middle section. So I'm just gonna use liquid glue for that. You do wanna make sure you put glue in the middle here because we are gonna die cut a rectangle out of the center. All right, so now we've got those panels in place. I do have a quick template to show you here what we're doing. This is what our panel looks like. We're gonna die cut from the center here. Using the stitched rectangle dies, we're gonna do the smallest one in this series of eight nesting rectangles. The approximate measurements of this are one and one sixteenth 
by two and three eighths if you don't have the stitched rectangle dies. And I'm gonna lay this over the center of this section, centering it from top to bottom and left to right in that middle panel. I got a post-it note here to hold that into place. And then bringing in the stamp and cut and emboss machine, I'm gonna put this at a slight angle. That's just gonna reduce sort of the speed bumps as that goes through the machine with a rectangle die. We're gonna run that back and forth twice. All right, remove my die, take out that rectangle. You can save this for another project. And now this matches our template here. Next, I've got a piece of Mary Merlot, and this piece measures one inch by four inches. Again, bringing in my paper trimmer here, we're gonna score this at one inch. Two and five sixteenths, which is one sixteenth past two and a quarter. And then I like to flip it, and we're gonna do this at three and five eighths. So again, that was one inch, two and five sixteenths. Then we flipped it and did three and five eighths. All right, so with the one inch, we're gonna turn that into a mountain fold. With the two and five sixteenths, also a mountain fold. And then the three and five eighths, we're gonna turn that into a valley fold. And we can burnish these as well. So you're gonna have a piece that looks like this, okay? Now before we put this together, we are actually going to glue this little tiny section to the back side of this. So we just wanna make sure we've got our designer series paper in the right orientation. I like to flip this over, okay? So this is the bottom panel here. We're gonna apply adhesive right there. It's easier to do it here because this panel is just a little bit narrower than the scored strip. So glue right there, and I'm going to flip this over, okay? So this one, we are gonna adhere right there. Now the key to this, use liquid glue, and you wanna make sure that that one inch strip has clearance on both sides. Can you kind of see how you can see right through those two sections? You wanna make sure you get that right into place because that's gonna allow this to pass through that cutout. So take your time with this. The liquid glue is great because it gives you a couple of extra seconds to get things into place like that. So then you can just see that this is gonna end up popping through and we are almost done. So now let me flip this over. I'm gonna grab tear and tape, and we're gonna run that right up to the edge here. Take that backing off with the take your pick tool. I'm gonna to fold on the second score line from the right, the first score line from the left, and we're gonna line those up. And this is gonna end up being our belly band or our slider. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got this piece kind of loose on this end, right? So this is the front of the box. We're gonna hold our breath and hope that that fits, and it does, yay! So that's gonna slide in there. Now the last thing that we need to do is adhere this little one inch section to the inside back of the box. So let me show you. We're gonna glue it right to the inside back. I found it was easiest to put this in, I don't know, about halfway because then that way, let me dry fit it here. We're gonna slip this in, and I wanna be able to get my finger sort of behind this so I can press that into place. I can kind of control the location of that cardstock. And again, we wanna make sure that we are of clearance on both the right and the left when we glue that down so that we'll have no problems with this sliding up and down. So let's do liquid glue here again. And we're gonna slide this down again. We're adhering this to the inside back of that sliding box. And I do wanna make sure that I've got clearance on either side. Just hold that into place. Sort of pressing from the back and from the inside. And then if you want to, you can slide this almost all the way out and that's gonna give you a little bit more leverage there to press that down. Unfortunately, it's too difficult to get your bone folder in there, but your fingers will do. And then we've got our mechanism just like that. How cool is that? Now you do wanna give that just a little bit of time to dry and adhere in there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let's work on our little pop-up part. I've got a piece of Mary Merlot that measures two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and a piece of the Beauty of the Earth Designer Series paper that measures two and an eighth by two and an eighth. We're gonna stamp on this one, and I wanted to quickly show you this bundle. So Beauty of Friendship, I love this, and we're gonna use the sentiment, Friendships Refresh the Soul, and you can get it bundled with this amazing set of dies here. Love these. These two rectangle ones not only cut, but they also do a little embossed frame around the cutout. It's beautiful, perfect for sentiments. So we're gonna stamp the sentiment in early espresso directly onto the designer series paper. And I think that font and sentiment is just stunning and perfect on this designer series paper. We're gonna go ahead and glue this to the Mary Merlot piece. Got a brand new embellishment that will be coming out in the new mini catalog. I'm gonna grab this brush. These are the brushed metallic dots. And now we are ready to glue this onto the front of our box. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put what I want in the box now. That's gonna give me a little bit of leverage. So when I close this, I've got something to press down onto in there. We're gonna apply glue just to this middle section here. So I think you see the score line there and then there's a score line right here. We're gonna put glue between those two score lines, and then when we adhere this, we want this bottom edge of the sentiment piece to go just above the score line that you see right there. That's gonna give it clearance to stand up. So let's go ahead and do liquid glue. And then take your time here lining this up so you're centered left to right, you're just above that score line before you press down. All right, we'll pop this up just a little bit here. Then I can sort of get behind it with my fingers and hold that into place. And there we have our beautiful pop-up easel gift box. I can't get enough of it. I absolutely love the way that this mechanism works. Thank you to Sabina for the inspiration. She shared a really cute one I will link in my detailed blog post. It's so, so cute. So. Love this, and what an awesome gift to give to somebody. They can put it on their desk and have it propped up. Maybe put a little handful of treats or something in there they can help themselves to. And you know they're gonna just sit there and open and close it because it's so fascinating to watch. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and pictures of the templates. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't wanna miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join, and I'd love to welcome you to the Stampin' Up! family and my team of paper pixies. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.